Um, so again, pre DEFCON Black Hat, this will be another another presentation made in two weeks. Um, a uh, a group who's in, who does like um, enterprise level mobile security called Zimperium took a close look at one of the modules that is ubiquitously available in Android. Uh, it deals with uh, with cellular media, but it's, it's also in other places. For example, Silent Circle had it in their black phone, and even it was even in Firefox. Uh, uh, and all versions of Firefox since version 38 are already patched to this. But they took a close look at the at the code and just in scrutinizing it found 12 problems about six of six or seven of which are remote code exploit remote code execution exploits and what's extra scary is that this thing is running by default as i mentioned at the top of the show it's about 950 million android devices are believed to be at risk from this. Google has already patched this uh, some time ago, but we're, we're back to the problem of back patching older phones. And, and that that's whole process seems to be problematical. Um, you know, in the coverage that I'm reading, it's generally felt that phones older than about 18 months are so re re relatively abandoned by their carriers and and in fact, the ACLU has filed has now filed a lawsuit to to get the the cell phone industry to face the fact that they're selling computers to people, which are now we're finding just as full of problems as the <laughs> we've been covering for you know all of the last ten years of this podcast, even before smartphones happened, and for decades before, as viruses were causing problems, um, yet they're not. There, there isn't because they're sort of consumer devices, and the carriers don't want to continue to take, to take responsibility for them. They're just being left in a condition where they're vulnerable. And in this case, you send the phone. All you need is the phone number of a vulnerable Android device. You send it a specially crafted multimedia message, an MMS message, and without the user doing anything, just the phone's receipt of the message, Android gets it and does enough parsing of it without it ever being selected or viewed that there are exploits in that early receipt and, and pre-parsing path that allow code to be executed. So anyway, so they're calling it, I mean, the, the module is called Stage Fright, which I thought, well, that was, <laughs> did, did they name this with some sort of prescience of some sort? Unlike a lot of the par, a lot of Android, because performance is crucial, this is not written in Java and therefore able to get any of the advantage of of the of the Java virtual machine protection, where essentially you're you're writing interpreted code. This is pure C++, where the code is essentially on, on you know at bare metal, have with full access to to the to the system and full responsibility being placed placed on the programmer. Um, so, uh, Android derivative Android and derivative devices. Uh, since version 2.2, since and including version 2.2, are vulnerable. Although those prior to Jelly Bean, which is a is a smaller portion of the whole, only about 11% of the devices, um, are at the at the highest level of risk because there have been other mitigations that have been put in place. You know, things like D, uh, uh, DSLR or ASLR and, and DEP, you know, the, the, the things that we've talked about that make these exploits more difficult. But as we know, difficult does is, is a reach from impossible. So um, uh, about seven uh, uh, CVE designations have been reserved. Right now, they're still blank because everyone's running around scurrying around and patching these um the, the the guys at zimperium will give a presentation 
show a video of of this being exploited and they do plan to produce and release proof of concept code after their presentation so essentially we know what will happen proof of concept code will quickly be uh, weaponized and uh, and what I'm hoping that will happen is that some good guys will uh, uh, will t take that and create a a benign proof of concept test as we have seen uh, in the past for other things you know for example that the the the, the little um, the flash exploit that that got loose from the hacking team it contained a proof of concept that launched the calc.exe app that's that's typically what they do is they they launch the calculator on your desktop just to show that look we just ran executable code that we should not have been able to run um, so it would be great if someone would produce a benign like someone with reputation so we knew they were benign produced proof of ex, uh, a proof of concept so that people could send their phone a test MMS that would allow them to pro proactively verify that they either were or were not vulnerable. Um, I, I ran across, actually it was Simon uh, Zarafa who tweeted a couple hours ago, uh, the patches, um, and they were in the, uh, they were in the, boy, I'm blanking on the name. What's the alternative? Cyanogen uh, mod. Yes, thank you. The I'm getting mod. good at reading your mind. <laughs> you are. That's perfect. <laughs> What's the? Uh, oh yeah, Cyanogen uh, mod. Of course. Yeah, everybody. Everybody knew that. And uh, and for anyone who's interested, I I'm, I will tweet this after the podcast because you know it it it, it it's your typical code diff where it shows remove this line, add this line, remove this line, add this line, and they're just it's like three simple little yeah. things. That if they were there, this wouldn't have happened. But of course, that's the way code patches are, and, and the way these problems are is that it's just the person who wrote it. I mean, like one of them is to, uh, creating a new array of a certain size, and the fix is of a certain size plus one. So you know, so it was just one byte too short, probably a null terminator, so that when you filled the array with size objects. You had one extra byte of null that would guarantee null termination, and that would prevent that string from being overrun. But that's not what the coder did. So they, you know, forgot the plus one. Whoops. So anyway, um, this is, you know, I, I guess. So what, what we need is we need um, we need to have some. I think an industry wide look at how cell carriers are going to be dealing with old this these older phones because they are computers and i mean and it's not like android is alone even apple has like ah, well you know we're not going to go you know we're, we're fixing things but we're not going to go all the way back into the dark past because we don't want to well but if the phones are still in use and they're vulnerable then they really do represent a target and Boy, I mean, talk about a, a a target of opportunity. I mean, basically, people could just send text messages blindly to blocks of of phone numbers that were known to belong to a given uh, uh, cell phone carrier and take over phones. And in fact, you can even delete the MMS message after you've sent it. So the malware. Uh, it, it would leave a notification that you'd received one, but what it was could be deleted as as part of wow. this. So, yeah, we don't know, yeah. do we? What versions of Android have been patched? What carriers have patched them? Which phones are patched? This has just happened, um, and so I think it. In fact, I think this was yesterday that the news happened. We know that Google has has responded. Google and Google says, code, it, yeah, they, they, they've put out a patch, right? And, right, and so any Google phone should be okay, I would think. Right, although th this this does affect nearly a billion. They're saying 950 million Android phones. Yeah. I know I got and, some and last night from T-Mobile on my Galaxy S6. I don't know if it's related or not, though. 
See, because they don't tell you. Nobody tells you what the fix is for. Yeah, and that and that's why we need we need somebody, maybe somebody listening to this. I, you know, this is the kind of thing I used to do before the podcast and before <laughs> Squirrel and before Spinrite six point one. I just I can't take time out to to go do that. But you know, all of the freeware that GRC was offering was my quick responses to horrible things Microsoft was doing back in the day. And uh, so hopefully somebody will do this. And if so, make sure I find out about it, listeners, and and tweet it to me so that... Um, something so benign. Can, so like you, you, you push yeah. a button and it sends you an MMS that says, yeah, if I'd been a bad guy, you'd be hacked Correct. Right now. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And, th and then see, and that will empower users to then go to their carriers and say, hey, this is... I, you've got to fix this yeah. because I, I mean somehow we I, I guess it'll, e it'll either be a combination of the legal process demanding that carriers take ongoing responsibility for for really bad security vulnerabilities in products that they've sold even you know during their useful life I mean they're 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 connected to the person's phone they're they're receiving revenue from this person and that connection that the person is paying for can infect them with malware right. through a widely known path seems to me there's a strong argument for saying that the that the providers have an ongoing responsibility as oh and uh, these guys provided google not only with the news of the problems but they gave them the patches they said here patch this and and google did so yeah. needs to uh, get fixed and or it may be an argument for if you're going to use an android phone getting an unlocked android phone that you could put your own firmware on like cyanogen mod right not getting a phone from a carrier Carriers don't really. Yeah, have much and, and I to think offer. that. Yeah, I, I think you know certainly that there we as we know the Android users are a, a, a broad class of people, um, and so listeners to this podcast could certainly do that. But you know, no, you know, no, there's I, millions I, of phones. All, Sold every day in India and China. That the, hundreds of yeah, millions yeah, are out yeah, there that are just yeah. you know that, that they're as vulnerable as right. as those that are carried by by people who could replace the firmware on their phone. But five point one point one is fixed or not? We don't know. Don't know. It just don't happened. Know. Yeah. Okay. J just happened. And what what we need is a test. We need somebody to do that. Maybe these guys will do that. As the if in fact the proof of concept code they're coming out with is a benign test, the, I, you know, it may be that what that what we're going to get after they, you know, after DefCon and Black Hat will be all we need. Send this MMS message to your phone. Um, and so it it may be easy uh, to to make that happen.